The UC Soros trade chatter is back in the Smashville Twitter sphere. Thanks to a tweet from David Pagnata from the fourth period. What are the chances UC Soros will actually be involved in trade talks this summer? And what would it take for Nashville to send him somewhere else? Plus, the Milwaukee Admirals season is over, which means question marks about two big pieces of the team. Head coach Carl Taylor and prize prospect Joachim Kennel. We'll talk about both today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free Nashville Predators podcast. That's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. A special hello to all of you loyal Lockdown Predheads out there who join us every single morning. We are happy to have you with us. I'm Nick Morgan. I am a writer at PenaltyBoxRadio.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at InsideThePreds.com. It's good to have you back. It's the the, the shows are a little uh, not as fun when you're not around. There's just not a, not as much hitch in the giddy up. Is that what you're telling? Me? Yeah, there, there's yeah, there's there's uh, less awkward uh, attempts to roll video clips for oh intros. Oh my gosh! And, yeah, yeah, it's it, been a morning, y'all, but we are here and. My goodness, there is always drama in the Preds universe recently. Yeah. And more it, to come. It always seems like when you're uh, unavailable, like, uh, you know, Andrew Burnett being hired as head coach uh, while you were off for a weekend. <laughs> no internet, y'all. Mama had no internet in the Nashville Predators. Let Hines go and hire Andrew Burnett, and I'm internetless. No. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're glad you have some availability now. Uh, before we get into today's topics, I want to mention today's episode brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash NHL, And when you enter promo code LockedOnNHL, you'll get a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. So go check them out. Uh, and big, uh, I guess drama, you, you call it or speculation, mm-hmm. Not not really sure what the what the right word for this is, but uh, the UC Saros trade chatter just doesn't seem to go away. Uh, this time it was a tweet from David Pagnata from the fourth period. To be clear, he didn't say like there's active talks or anything, but what he did say is that the Predators and a Los Angeles Kings had engaged in trade talks surrounding UC Saros before the trade deadline, mm-hmm. uh, before the Kings went out and got uh, Gavrikov and Jonas Corposalo from the Blue Jackets, uh, mentioned the trade was for multiple picks and prospects. And he added that with, uh, he said, I wonder if those two teams will go back to maybe talking this summer now that Corposalo is a free agent. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, like, what, what do you make of A you know, the Nashville Predators were t- like kicking the tires on maybe moving UC Saros at the deadline. Here's kind of my take on it. Initially, it's, it's uh, oh my gosh. But then you have to go back and remember, what does David Poyle always say? David Poyle takes all the calls. David Poyle always likes to know the market value of his players. Now, this is something that he has said consistently over the last couple seasons when it came to player like Matthias Ekholm. I like to know what is the market value of this. So I'm going to take those calls. I'm going to have a discussion. I'm going to listen to an offer. But that doesn't necessarily mean that David Poyle is ready to pull the trigger on that. So I think you kind of have to put that perspective on this tweet. Does that mean that David Poyle you know, in Barry Trotz, because he was involved at the trade deadline in those conversations. Does that really mean that they were interested in pulling the trigger on trading UC Soros? Or is that just, hey, we took a phone call from the Kings and listened to what their offer would be because they want to know what is UC Soros worth? You know, the Predators are in a transition. At this point, more information about something like that is better for Nashville as they look forward. 
So I don't think it necessarily means they were ready to pull the trigger and that UC Soros, you know, stayed in Nashville just by chance, you know, or that they are very seriously considering this. I think they're doing their due diligence. I, I agree. And to be clear, we don't really know the meaning of what talks were because sure. talks, you know, in the NHL, especially when it comes to rumors and stuff, you know, the Los Angeles Kings could have been like, hey, we want UC Saros. Uh, what would it take for you know him to move? And David Poyle could have been like, yeah, it's going to take Quentin Byfield. Uh, it's going to take another top prospect and two first round picks. And the King could be like, yeah, no, we're going to look elsewhere. That's right. still that still counts as a talk. So, right. you know, that that could have been, you know, I guess just the extent of it. We are not sure. Um, you know, you also have to imagine the Predators at that time were way out of the playoff berth. They thought maybe they were going to have to try to take a step back, uh, you know, and kind of reevaluate the franchise, maybe work towards a little bit of a rebuild and getting some of these younger players in there. Uh, you know, it, things very well could have changed in in that time frame. I, I'm with you. I think it for me, um, I would be very surprised if anything comes of it now. Mm -hmm. uh, not like shocked, like not like drop, you know, like stunned or anything like that. Right. I would just be like more of a, you know, like, huh, I didn't think it was happened. But, you know, now that it's happened, yeah, it kind of makes sense sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think the last 20 games of the Predator season after the trade deadline, do you think that will change what Trotz, Poyle would do with Saros at I all? Think, I think maybe it moves the timeline back a mm -hmm. little bit because maybe the last 20 games gives you more confidence, some of these younger players, and be like, okay, maybe we do have you know, some semblance of a team going here um, you know, maybe we're closer towards getting some of these players, you know, in, in prime spots to take over games than we previously thought. Um, I, I think, you know, for me, the maybe the first 41 games of next season is maybe going to be the, yeah. the bigger factor as to, you know, what UC Saros future is and should be. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, like the Preds suck again you know, but UC Saros is still, you know, a stalwart. Maybe you need to ramp up trying to get some, some more immediate pieces to build around. And you look at the Los Angeles Kings and it's an interesting trade partner because they have some young forwards that you could build around. A lot of people mention Quinton Byfield, former number one or number two pick in the draft. Right. Uh, a couple of years ago, Alex Turcott is another guy that a lot of people have been very high on. Uh, a little bit underwhelming, both of those players uh, in their career progressions so far. But I wonder if it's one of those things where, you know, Barry Trotz looks at them and says, you know, we can work them maybe a little bit differently than what these this team has been, what the Kings have been doing. And maybe that's our future number one center. If that's the case, maybe this becomes a little bit more intriguing of an option for the Nashville Predators. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I think you have to go back to fit matters when you're looking at those two players. You know, maybe they have it come out like people anticipated that they would. But if you bring a young player into the Predators where the Predators are now, like this is a team with a new head coach and the direction of the team is very clear. I don't know that the direction of the team has been clear the last three or four seasons. Now it's very clear. Yeah. If you bring in a couple of guys like this where you're already investing in developing some of these young players, when you're in, you know, invested in Cody Glass and perhaps Luke Evangelista, we're going to talk about Joachim Kamel, you know, this might be a really good place to bring in a younger guy who maybe has quote unquote underperformed where he's at. This could be, you know, Nashville could be a really good landing spot for players like that. Yeah. I think that's where the conversation starts to, and, you know, mm -hmm. Hey, maybe there may be another team out there uh, that's has more young prospects that they're willing to give up that are in, in need of a goaltender. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how the summer goes on, but, you know, I think the bottom line for me and is it's going to take a lot, I think for oh, the okay. Raiders right now uh, to get rid of UC Saros, especially hearing everything that Barry Trotz has said about him. Uh, this off season and just, you know, how important I think 
a goaltender like him is to a rebuild when you're trying to give some of these younger forwards and defensemen more confidence, uh, how big having a guy like him, you know, helps in that regard. I think the Predators are – they're going to be in the mindset where we're going to prefer to keep him, but if we get an offer that just blows us away, then we'll mm-hmm. consider it. But the onus is on you, other teams. You're the ones that have to make us the offer. Right. I don't think that they're actively shopping UC Soros at all. No. You know, at all. But I agree with you. I think David Poyle and I really do suspect Barry Trotz will be the same way. They're going to pick up the phone if the phone rings just to find out, you know, what the offer is. But I agree with you. I think there's such a benefit to keeping Soros in Nashville through this transition time. There is, it's nice in that Nashville has Kevin Lankin in, Nashville has Yaroslav Miskarov in the, you know, coming up. But I don't think it's the right time yet. If Barry Trotz asked me, I would say not yet. Yeah. And for, for other teams that need a goaltender, there's chatter. Connor Hellebuck might be available. You know, Jonas Corposalo is on the free agent market. It looks like, you know, we could have guys like Freddie Anderson on the free agent market. You know, you may, you may see another team looking for a franchise goaltender, you know, look at other options rather than want to give up, you know, a game changing or a franchise changing type package. For right. a goalie. So it's going to be interesting to see. Again, like I, I think at the end of the day, I don't think it happens this summer. But if it does, uh, and it's for a big package, it wouldn't, you know, I, my job wouldn't be on the floor. Yeah, I agree with you. It it could make sense with the right package, but it's a wow package, friends. Yeah. Uh, there's other people uh, who have question marks surrounding their future, surround, specifically people in the Milwaukee Admirals, including head coach Carl Taylor. A lot of fans thought that he was going to be the next coach and waiting. Now that Andrew Burnett's here, will he be back? Will he look at other jobs around the NHL? That's a conversation we're going to have in just one second. But first, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by bird dogs you've probably seen ads for bird dogs around social media you know maybe heard like certain influencers talk about them and you may be wondering is it is it really worth it like or is it just like another just average product that's getting overblown let me tell you firsthand bird dogs are some of the most comfortable pants i have ever worn bird dogs stretch khaki shorts which i wore to the nfc cincinnati game last night and felt great they're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg to give your body a little bit of that sculpted lurk uh bird dog shorts pretty much do the exact same thing as lululemon but fit way better a little bit more natural they fit way better than regular shorts made out of uh stiff restricting cotton and bird dogs Fix this issue by inventing cloud neck fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches. So you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. So you get that kind of classic look without that sort of bulky dress shorty feel. And Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long so you gotta try these and you gotta try them yourself go to birddogs.com slash locked on nhl enter promo code locked on nhl for a free yeti style tumbler with your order again birddogs.com slash locked on nhl for free style or a free yeti style tumbler you won't want to take your bird dogs off promise you the most comfortable shorts you will ever wear all right, Ann. Uh, sadly, since you and I last recorded, the Milwaukee Admirals season has come to an end uh-huh. right before getting to the uh, the Calder Cup Finals. Um, yeah, I mean, good good season for the Admirals, though. It was a great season for the Admirals, and so beneficial in the long run. I think that's going to trickle into the Nashville Predators organization because you have players like Luke Evangelista, you have Yaroslav Askarov, you have um, uh, Joachim Kamel, who we're going to be talking about. You have Kiefer Sherwood, Michael McCarron, all of these guys who the Predators saw, Phil Tomasino, you know, Predators fans saw at the end of the season, kind of got a glimpse of them. These guys have run the gauntlet of a long postseason run against some of the top teams. And look, Coachella Valley, who they lost to in the Western Conference Finals, they have some of the top, like I think they have four of the top six offensive scorers in the entire AHL. So Milwaukee, I think, did a great job. Probably they won a couple moments back in the first two games. Um, But I think overall, 
you can't be anything but impressed with what the Admirals did. And as Nashville Predators fans who are looking at a reset, which could be depressing, could be a little, you know, enthusiasm killing, this run in Milwaukee really adds a lot of excitement to training camp and to next season for the Nashville Predators. Some great things happening in Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean, the Nashville Predators, you look at, you know, you sort of read about their farm systems and the prospects that are coming up. And a lot of the sort of upward positivity, because just a few years ago, uh, they were kind of considered one of the thinnest systems in the league. Now Mm -hmm. they're considered, you know, by like a top 10 system by Scott Wheeler. A lot of that has been due to the development of some of these guys in Milwaukee and guys that, you know, the Predators fans like kind of forgot about like Alexander Carrier. Uh-huh. Look what he was able to do under a few with a few years under Carl Taylor. Uh, you know, same for guys like Yakov Trenin was sort of a forgotten guy uh, and then came back into the fold, you know, sort of become an everyday player. So, you know, credit to, you know, what Carl Taylor has been able to do down there. And there's a lot of excitement. Will he be back with the team, though? Is you that- almost don't want to give him too much credit because you want to be like, don't look. Don't look over here. Yeah. My business. <laughs> yeah. So so obviously, Carl Taylor, Milwaukee Admirals head coach, a lot of people way back during the Heinz drama were like, this is like the next head coach. You know, that's that's why this whole process has been waiting, you know, so long because we want to wait till Milwaukee's done before we announce this. Uh, he is kind of, you know, considered by a lot of fans to be like that coach in waiting to yeah. be like the next guy that takes over the Nashville Predators. A lot of people thought the Preds were kind of grooming him for that role. The organization obviously thinks very highly of him. Uh, but and you know, even Barry Trotz mentioned he was one of the three finalists for the Predators head coaching job. But instead, the Predators go Andrew Burnett. Somebody from the outside, even though he is a former Pred, another younger coach, somebody that I think can, you know, the Preds can kind of develop. So that goes into mind. Like if Burnett's kind of your guy long term, what happens to Carl Taylor? Remember, Barry Trott said he expects Carl Taylor to get some interest from NHL teams uh, as early as this summer. Yeah. And I think Barry Trotz is right. I think Carl Taylor, is. I think his phone is going to be ringing. I do think it's really interesting because I agree with you. Most people in Nashville felt like this job was Carl Taylor's. You know, when it looked like probably Hines was not going to be back, I think everybody just sort of felt like this is now Carl Taylor's time. I think there are very few hires that could come in and not cause a ruckus. Andrew Brunette, That's how you know that the fan base thinks this is a really good hire with Brunette, because I think there are a lot of other candidates that wouldn't be Carl Taylor that would cause upheaval with this fan base, because this fan base has wanted Carl Taylor for a long time. So kudos to Andrew Brunette for being a hire that does not cause, you know, a run on pitchforks and stuff. I think that's very encouraging. But I agree with you. Um, Barry Trotz, when they announced uh, Andrew Brunette, he talked about Carl Taylor was one of the other three top candidates. Wouldn't mention who the third candidate was. Wanted to keep that in-house, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, I would would assume maybe Spencer Carberry, just because of his relationship with Trotz. Right. Um, So I think... Carl Taylor is obviously at the top of the Predators list. Didn't didn't get the gig this time. But I feel like because they hired Andrew Burnett, does that mean the door is closed for Carl Taylor with the Nashville Predators? I mean, I I don't think he's going to be like the next head coach in waiting. No. No, I think think we got to at least change that expectation. Uh, But at the same time, I mean, he still can be like a coaching prospect. Uh, remember, the Nashville Predators still have a assistant coach vacancy. Uh, you know, Andrew Burnett may want to bring in his guy, but, you know, at the same time, maybe Carl Taylor has an interview like that, just like Peter Horacek back in the day was Milwaukee Admirals head coach. Barry Trotz brought him up as an assistant. You mm-hmm. look at other teams. I mean, I think everybody besides the Rangers and Flames now have their head coach. Uh, right. you know, the Calgary Flames, maybe they take a shot at, you know, somebody like Taylor, an up and coming guy, uh, but they may also want somebody with like NHL assistant head coaching experience. 
Uh, and, you know, it sounds like the Rangers are going to hire either Laviola or John Hines. So I don't even have words. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, it, it wouldn't, you know, surprise me if, you know, Carl Taylor maybe talks to Calgary, mm-hmm. you know, or at least, or at least there's like tires kicked around there. Cause you know, they just hired a young GM. Maybe they want to look at a, a young head coach yeah, just to say, okay. screw it. Let's see what we got. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, there, there's not, I don't know if there are any better options out there for Carl Taylor right now than to at least stay on as head coach in Milwaukee. And, you know, may, maybe there's like, you know, somebody that wants to bring him on as assistant or something like that. But yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it would suck if he left. It would suck y'all. Yeah. I think, I think for me though, I look it, from Carl Taylor's perspective, it's like, okay, is there like a surefire better job? right out there right now than what you have with the Nashville Predators. Right. And look, his success in the AHL, you know, a lot of people say, you know, will that translate to the NHL? I think Carl Taylor in as the Predators fans have watched players, like you said, like Carrier, like Yakov Trenin, you know, we saw Luke Evangelista come up, you know, we saw what he has done when it comes to developing these young players. And I think that as his skill set is what really made people think this was the time for him with Nashville. It didn't work out. So I think you're right. You know, he's got a great resume. I think some NHL teams, although like you said, there's not a ton left looking for a head coach. I think they would be foolish not to talk to him, even about an assistant coach job. I would hate to lose Carl Taylor, but I feel like when you've just hired Andrew Burnett, you you have pushed back his next NHL head coach of the Nashville Predators significantly. And it just, you know, he's probably ready for the next step before the Predators would be ready to look for their next head coach. Yeah, I would imagine it's going to come down to can he find that next step somewhere? Right. Whether it's with the Preds or whether it's somebody else. And I think at the end of the day, that probably determines Carl Taylor's future. Is 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 there somewhere on another team where he finds a um, you know, a, a more this is this is the path that's going to get me to NHL coaching spot than where he is right now. And there may not be. Right. Um, but you know, what we'll have to see. I mean, it would certainly be uh, a big loss. Uh, you know, transitioning to another Milwaukee Admiral, and uh, and that's Yoakam Kemmel, who wow. had himself quite a debut couple of months in Milwaukee, tore it up at the end of the regular season, tore it up in the playoffs. Will he jump the gun and be with the Nashville Predators next season? Let's talk about that topic in a little bit. First, want to let you know today's episode's brought to you by FanDuel. So you can make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That is $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So, hey, do you think you know who the top scorer is going to be in tonight's game? You know, you feel confident, you know, who's going to be the finals rebound leader. You can head to FanDuel. You can place your bet. Do you think you know who the NBA Finals MVP is going to be? I think a lot of people have a feeling about this, but, you know, you can go there and place your bet and see how you do. And of course, hockey fans can always check out the Stanley Cup final wagers at FanDuel as well. FanDuel is a safe, secure app and you get paid instantly. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get your no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, and uh, Yoakam Kemmel had himself quite the debut couple of months for the Milwaukee Admirals. Uh, After finishing up his year in Finland, came over to North America's first taste of North American hockey action, wound up playing 14 regular season games with the Admirals, 13 points in that span was a big part of the playoff run in 14 games, eight goals and two assists, the Milwaukee Admirals leading goal scorer. And I mean, everybody's asking the question. It's like he really impressed 
a lot in a short stint. And a lot of people are making the comparison to Phil Tomasino and his impressive debut, you know, stint a few years ago. Do we think Joachim Kimmel is going to be, uh, you know, at least have a chance to make the Preds roster next season? I think he absolutely has a chance to make the roster. Timing is everything. And I think if you were looking at a Nashville Predators team that didn't realize that they are in a reset, if they hadn't done the sell-off at the trade deadline and sort of made this huge pivot, maybe not. But I think where the Predators are, this is a young player that I think it costs you nothing to bring him up to the NHL right now. And like, you know, we didn't see a ton of him. You know, you said like 14 regular season games. He had 14 games in the playoffs. But what he did... In those playoff games in Milwaukee, I think was very noteworthy. This is a guy who, like you said, eight goals, four power play goals. He was so fun to watch on the power play with his shot. He is tenacious. He is physical. He's a big dude. Like he's he's man sized. Um, I think there's a lot of upside for Joachim Kamel at this point where the Nashville Predators are. I cannot wait to see him at development camp in July. And I think training camp is going to be very big for him and for some of these other players that we saw at the end of last season from Milwaukee and that played in the playoffs. But I would not be at all surprised to see him get a chance in Nashville. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily willing to bet the farm that it's going to be right out of the gate it may not be because, you know, he's still adjusting to North American hockey. He hasn't played a ton of North American hockey games. Mm-hmm. But I think this is a guy that Preds fans are going to see sooner rather than later. Yeah, I mean, it was a big, uh, you know, pretty impressive for his for- first taste of, you know, North American hockey that he was able to do just well because we see a lot of prospects come over from Europe and kind of, you know, maybe take at least a couple of games to get used to. And he jumped right in the fold. You know, for for Camel, there's two things uh, to me that, you know, it really sort of, you know, comes down to is one is, is he going to beat out other people for, you know, a prime spot on the NHL roster? I assume you would want him somewhere on your top three lines. Is he going to be better? You know, is he going to beat out Luke Evangelista? for instance, is, you know, is he going to beat out Phil Tomasino, for instance, you know, because remember, you got Forsberg coming back, you got Duchesne coming back, uh, you know, you got you got Ryan Johansson, uh, you're going to have a healthy Yuso Parson in again. So right. a lot of these people who played really well for the Predators down the stretch uh, are, are back in the fold as well. Guys like Tommy Novak, he's going to be fighting for a spot too. And it's just like, are, are, are there enough spots in the, in the top nine that you can justify? And it's like, okay, this is, you know, we, we have to put Kemmel in the lineup here. Right. That's one thing. Go, go ahead. Well, this is where I kind of hope that Andrew Brunette uh, adopts sort of a a newer philosophy about rolling out four lines. We talked about this Mm -hmm. with Ellie Tolvin in, in Seattle. You know, they roll out four lines more completely. When you're looking at the potential of this roster, you aren't going to want a a Joachim Kamel out on the fourth line getting, you know, minimal minutes. So maybe this is a chance to kind of even out some ice time for some of these players because you're looking at a lot of young players that are going to be battling for ice time and that will benefit from it. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Brunette views running these four lines is it is it gonna kind of look like it used to could we maybe see something new and different i'm yeah. here for new and different yeah i mean you keep in mind you're still gonna need people to play like on the penalty kill you're still gonna need like some defensive forwards to go out there against uh you know like that like if that other team rolls out you know their big bodies or checking line you're gonna need somebody that can kind of withstand that and give that back and you know, maybe, maybe a younger guy, like, like a younger skill guys, maybe not quite ready for it. So maybe that's something you kind of have to keep in mind as well. You know, there's also the skill set. I mean, Kemmel put up great stats in Milwaukee, but you know, there's obviously still part of his game that he needs to develop. His shot was fantastic. You know, you know, a lot of creative, great stick handler, just an incredible shot. I think Mm -hmm. we would say the shot is NHL ready, it's just the rest of his game. Do you right. look at and say, okay, 
that's somebody that can consistently be in an NHL lineup. And that's, you know, like his strength, you know, to win puck battles. You know, we want to see like the skating improve just a little bit, um, you know, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, being able to play off the puck, kind of be creative mm-hmm. into getting into space. You know, we see guys like Yuso Parson and Tommy Novak do really well on the NHL level. That's something I think Kemmel still needs to figure out is how to play off the puck, which, you know, that's going to come in time, you know, developing your game and you know more work in the ahl is going to help that um so i mean there's still a lot of stuff that you know he's going to need to work on to be a really good pro and i think that's something we should we should keep in mind as we're determining oh is he ready for the nhl is he not um you know because there's more than just you know having a really good shot Yes, there is. The thing that I think works maybe in his favor as far as getting NHL time sooner rather than later, and this may change based on development camp, based on training camp, but I think what he did on the power play for Milwaukee really gives him a little bit of a leg up, especially because, you know, you talk about Andrew Brunette, you know, and of course, Everybody says he's an offensive coach and he's great on the, you know, power play coaching. So that may be something where they're going to want to see him sooner rather than later, especially because let's face it, the Predators power play at times last season was woof. Like it was just woof. (laughs) So that may work in his favor, but I agree with you. The upside of this is there's no downside. You know, if he plays in the AHL, then that's a great place for him to continue to to develop those skills that you were talking about. That's a great place to keep growing. I don't think he has necessarily outgrown the the AHL. Um, I think the NHL is is going to stretch him. It would stretch him. It might be a a a good time for him to kind of be pushed a little bit more in NHL. But no matter where he ends up, this is a young man whose game is going to continue to improve. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what he does for it. It doesn't matter if it's at the beginning of the next year, maybe halfway through next year, or, you know, uh, another full season from now. I think when Kemmel gets into the lineup, we are going to be very excited to see what he can do because this is this is a legitimate top-end offensive prospect the Preds now have to build around. And who knows? You know, Predators have a lot of picks in this draft, 13 picks in this draft. <laughs> You know, Barry Trotz has talked about maybe uh, investigating, taking a swing for a young four that you can build around. Times are changing, my friend. I think we are going to agree one way or the other. Whatever happens, uh, we are going to have a completely different outlook on this team when the uh, the training camp starts. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and where can people find your work? You can find my work online at InsideThePreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at PenaltyBoxRadio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also, be sure to follow the podcast as well, LO underscore Predators. That way you stay in the loop with show updates and you get to comment on uh, your favorite topics, anything we discussed. We'd love to hear your thoughts that's going to do it for us on today's locked on predators podcast just a reminder whatever platform you're listening on whether it's your favorite podcasting platform or on youtube hit that subscribe button so you will always know when we have fresh stuff out for you and helps us out a little bit shows us some love we will see you tomorrow for another all new episode we'll see you then Yay! We did it.